Can you imagine you or your loved one getting diagnosed with a terminal illness and not knowing what to do? Can you imagine going back and forth to the hospital constantly and no one's really kind of giving you a straight answer or taking the time to educate you on the services that you need? We get this all the time. One of the things that's a common question that we see a lot is the difference between hospice and palliative care. And what does that even mean? So what me and my wife decided to do is we decided to, at the end of a day, uh, turn on the camera and just talk. Uh, so this podcast is really explaining the difference between hospice and palliative care. And this is the first part. My wife, who is director of nursing here for home health and hospice at Charlotte Health Services, uh, AKA super mom, AKA super woman, uh, AKA my best friend, told me when I was dating her in college that she wanted to be a hospice nurse. And I was like, what? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I have no idea what hospice nursing is. I couldn't even think about it at that time because I was playing soccer and I wanted to be a professional athlete. Uh, and she said, no, hospice is beautiful. It, 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 if it's done well, uh, you can really be with patients and families at the end of life and help them pass with dignity and, and, and respect. And I was like, interesting. So uh, she's the best person to talk about hospice. So I said, let's let's chat. This podcast is meant for you if you are a healthcare worker or a healthcare clinician, a doctor, a nurse who sometimes doesn't have the time to explain hospice or palliative care to families. This is a great reference that you could use. Uh, if you are a patient yourself or you are one of a, a potential patient that's needing hospice or palliative care, this is a great one for you. So this will be part one. There'll be a few other parts. Uh, and also you can what you can do on the bottom uh, is click through each section and pick the topics that you want to just listen to if you can't watch the whole thing. I think it'll be a great resource for you. Uh, but with no further ado, uh, this is hospice versus palliative care. Enjoy. Mm. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. Yeah. How are you? Good. My name is Charles. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> uh, well, Evelyn, thank you for... Actually, I mean, we're going to do this a lot, so I think this is going to be pretty cool that everyone will get to see a little bit of the insides of what we do here at Charlotte Health Services. But I think the heart behind this is just really to educate people and help them understand, like, what is healthcare at home? For sure. What is hospice? What is home health? What is palliative care? What is VA care? So really, I mean, we literally just turned on the camera. You just had a long day. You just admitted two patients and we're just talking. So one of the things we wanted to talk about that we hear a lot all the time is the difference between palliative care and hospice care. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't know anything and I was a, a gentleman that had an issue with his mom not doing too well, uh, what would you advise me um, if the doctor said hospice? And I'm like, I don't wanna give up. Like, I don't want my mom to give up and my mom doesn't wanna give up. Like, what would you say? Like, if, if the doctor just said hospice evaluate and treat and I'm like, what? What would you what would be the first thing that you would say to me? Uh, we we actually get that call quite a bit. Mm. Um, people call to the office and they say, oh, no, I don't. Our doctor wrote an order for hospice. I don't think we're ready for it. Um, just need to understand what that means. Um, a lot of times I start the conversation of asking them, like, what do you already know about hospice or what do you think you will mm. understand about hospice? Because I like to get a baseline before I start talking at somebody. Mm. Um, but I also want to know kind of what their basic understanding is because I don't want to demean them or anything else. Yeah. Um, it's a really fragile space, obviously. So, you know, conveying compassion throughout the entire conversation of, of explaining, you know, I'm really sorry you're dealing with this. It's a challenging space to be in. Um, I try and get a picture of what their home environment looks like. So mm. whether, where does the patient live? How much support do they have? Is is this their only family member or does the, the son have a wife and the children, you know, whatever else, like um, what's the home environment look yeah, like? Yeah. Um, to really set the patient up for success too, um, so that I can best support the family and the, and the patient. Um, hospice is just as much for the family as it is for the patient mm. um, because it's a very holistic approach um, I just spent a lot of time explaining this to somebody yesterday is that, um, 
hospice is here medically for your loved one, but also very emotionally to walk you through physical, spiritual, emotional, holistically. Yeah. What does your what does your journey look like? Because this person will pass on, but you are still left behind. And what does that leave you with? What are you walking through? Hmm. Um, and that's the beauty of hospice is not just medical, it's the social work, it's the chaplain, it's the volunteer, it's the aide, um, it's the case manager, understanding yeah. your situation and yeah. really customizing it to what you need, basically. What do you, what do you say to families when they say, I, I don't wanna give up? Like, or like, what, what does that mean when, you, when clinically, everything kind of looks like they're going down the path where they need to start thinking and shifting their mind like what can what do you usually say to families like like when they say i don't want to give up i feel like hospice is giving up i get that question all yeah. the time because people do feel like hospice is so finite right and i think one of the things i say all the time too is that hospice needs to be rebranded completely yeah. because yeah. i think that people in general have the wrong idea of hospice yeah. so a lot of times people say i'm not ready to give up because it they think it means like just letting whatever happen happen right, and just right. not even treating things so that's a common them myth starve. yeah like that's a common myth yeah. i have to break on a daily basis is i'm not letting your loved ones starve but i'm also looking at quality of life like is your pain adequately controlled if you're not hungry who's making you eat yeah, like yeah, yeah. um you know, there's there's things that our body, as it's declining, is telling us right. uh, physically, and it's our job to decipher. Like, hey, food is love, yes. Like, don't get me wrong, but your loved one doesn't need food right now. Yeah. Um, having those conversations of like breaking down, like, what are those specific symptoms? What is the disease doing to this person's body? How is it? Um, how is it changing their body, their chemistry? Um, if, if it's a if it's a mental disorder like like Alzheimer's or dementia, yeah. like what is that person's physical body showing us that their mental capacity cannot explain in words to us? Mm. Um, so yeah, I I don't like to use the word never give up because I I genuinely don't feel hospice is giving up. Yeah. I feel like it's it's giving a person the chance to live their best life with the little that they have left. Mm. So I have hospice patients for two years. I've had a couple of them and gosh, I love them. And one day when they pass, I will be a wreck mm. because they feel like family to yeah. me. But um, at the same time, I mean, everybody's hospice journey looks so yeah. different. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I think a lot of families think and it's crazy. Like I know you, you saw. We all saw that Jimmy Carter went on to hospice, mm -hmm. and he's living I, his best life. Oh my gosh, I, it's crazy. I'm so happy for him. Yeah, and it's crazy because I think like even with Jimmy Carter, like when it's crazy how the the thought of hospice people think it's they're just dying right. Yeah. Right? Like when yes. everyone was alerted earlier this year that he was going on to hospice, everyone was like, oh wow. He's, he's gonna die tomorrow. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. Like, and 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 that can happen, right? Like, can. like it, it definitely can. Happen. can. Um, but it, it, we don't know, right? When someone's gonna pass away, so it doesn't mean like they're gonna pass away right away. Mm -hmm. It's actually just making sure that they're 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 prepped well, mm -hmm. right? They have family around. You have social workers and everyone. I think it's it's crazy. I like how you said like I, like it needs to be like rebranded hospice, mm -hmm. and that's where I think like I think that's why people talk about palliative care. And so, so like, what yeah. is that? Like, how do you differentiate between palliative care and hospice care? <laughs> right. So palliative care is tricky. Um, so hospice is palliative care. Palliative care is not hospice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so palliative care is comfort measures, right? So when a person is receiving palliative care, they could still be going back and forth to the hospital. They could still be on home health. They could still be... Um, even in a rehab or in yeah. a skilled nursing facility or something like that. Um, and chemo treatments. Yes, yeah. yes. So there is a, a palliative form of chemotherapy at times. Um, just depends. I mean, every cancer is very different. Mm. Every cancer treatment is very different. Every oncologist has their own ideas. That's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, there is palliative chemo. Um, so th that's not... 
it's not electing the hospice benefit. Mm -hmm. So I like to explain that when a person when a person comes on hospice, Medicare will put them into this umbrella of you are under this specific space of like you're getting this this X Y Z you know from all from the hospice basically. Mm -hmm. Um, palliative care is not within that umbrella. So it is, but it isn't. <laughs> palliative care isn't like funded by mm -hmm. any government organization. Right now, I guess. Yeah. At it, least it at this point. Road, yeah. It could be. That's all. That Sarah awesome. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um So right now, like we have patients on home health that mm -hmm. are receiving palliative care right. because we know that within a month to two months to maybe six months, they will be hospice patients. Mm -hmm but the family is not ready to, to choose hospice. And the reason it feels very finite is because hospice makes you give up your doctors, gives yeah. up your specialists. Um, and yes, that's a negative to it, but it, it can also be a con or a pro. Mm -hmm. um, it can also really improve their quality of life by not going to 16 different doctors. And uh, I mean, I've met some patients who I'm like, that's your full-time job is yeah, going to your going to eight the, different yeah, specialists every week. and it's obnoxious. But Cardiologist, oncologist, yeah. pulmonologist, neurologist, rheumatologist, and then <laughs> all the the internal, yeah, internal medicine doctor, your PCP. Mm -hmm. And then you got to make sure you check on your grandkids and then you... Yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah. yeah I... Oh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. So, a yeah, palliative care is is electing things that are only providing you comfort, not necessarily treating the problem. Hospice is very black and white symptom management versus treatment of new problems. So I like to explain that hospice is not finding the source of those problems mm -hmm. ever. Um, and even on palliative care, you're not finding the source of the problem. Yeah. You probably already know the source of the problem. Right. Um, but it's not doing extreme measures. So, um, and even that is a complicated thing because, yeah. Yeah. you know, when we are doing advanced directives and yeah. wills and all that good stuff, that gets complicated. Yeah. So. I, think, I think the word palliative care is just, I mean, it just sounds softer than hospice. It does. You know, I think when I, when you hear the word hospice, you think of like, okay, death, right? Mm -hmm. But when you hear palliative care, you're like, hmm, what's palliative care? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, that sounds nice. So there are a lot of patients who, like <laughs> this one I admitted today, she's like, can we use the word palliative, not hospice? Yeah. And I said, sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll call better. it home health if you want me to. Yeah. I don't care what yeah. you want to call it. That's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it's, the, and then it's the crazy hard. thing, I think there's just there's been a lot of like bad stigma. Like there's always bad apples, right? There's always bad apples in every industry, mm -hmm. right? So like, you know, if you want, if you want, if you're hungry and you want something to eat, right? You can go to a Chick Fil A, right? You can go to Chick Fil A that's here, or you can go to Chick Fil A that's in like five five miles down the road. Mm -hmm. It may be managed differently, so you may not get the best service, mm -hmm. but Chick-fil-A is Chick-fil-A. I think the same thing that everyone don't really don't understand is that hospice is, is the same. It is. Like it's medically fund it's funded by Medicare, mm -hmm. right? And so there's these constructs that every hospice is the same. They have to abide by the regulations of Medicare and by the state. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of families don't realize is that that doesn't mean that each hospice is the same. One hospice may be run differently, mm -hmm. just like one Chick-fil-A is run differently than the other one. Mm -hmm. And I think, and then another thing, I, you know, I think one of the things that, that families don't understand is they have the right to choose, right? They do. You know, you can choose whatever hospice you want. They right? do. You can interview a hospice. Mm -hmm. You can see if it's a good fit for you. Um, I think sometimes when, uh, and you, you know this and you see this all the time, is when you're, when you're like like at the last minute getting hospice you don't have the time to really sit back and say okay all right you know mom needs this okay let's look at these hospices that i've seen in the area let me take a look right you're not in that frame of mind you're really like like it's like last minute and you don't and you sometimes get thrown into yeah. the hospice yeah and i think that's why palliative care is a beautiful thing mm -hmm. because it's kind of like okay let me just see what's going on with my loved one. What do you think? And just from your experience as well. Yeah, yeah. I I would agree with all of that. Yeah, it's uh, 
it's a challenging space to be in for sure to make that decision and generally when our patients are coming home from the hospital specifically yeah. when it's a hospital discharge those patients are very sick yeah um and usually they get home and oh man most of them die within a week yeah and it's yeah. it's traumatic yeah. it's hard um, but the reality is we're guests in their home. Yeah. Uh, we're, we, you know, we, we barely had the time to, to build a relationship and for them to feel comfortable with us. Yeah. Yeah. And that's never what we want. We want to be there for you and, and build a relationship of trust um, so that you know that when I'm giving your loved one medication at the end of life, that you're not questioning, like, is she over medicating? Like, why is she giving all of these things? It's like, you tr you've trusted me with your loved one's care for this amount of time. You know that my heart is not to to, to over medicate. But again, right. just like with any relationship in any area of life, it it's like, time. it takes time. And so, um, you know, when those kind of, those, those rapid decisions happen at the end of life, you know, there's, ugh, there's always that guilt. There's always that, what it, what could I have done differently? Yeah. What did I, where did I go wrong? When should I have stopped kind of questions? And, and that's what we try and prevent. But again, it's, it's your decision. I mean, it is a, it is a big decision. Yeah. It's it's accepting the reality of your loved one has a terminal illness that will never get better. And yeah. it will cause their demise at some point. And that's hard. It's hard pill to swallow. Yeah, it is. I think it's hard, too, because we don't think about death. Like, I think, you know, what they say, three things are certain, birth, death, and taxes, right? Like, yeah. that's like, those are the three things that are certain. Yeah, who came up with that yeah, phrase? Yeah. I don't know either, but it's true, right? It like, is true. Those are the three things that are certain, and you prepare for all three of them. Mm -hmm. You prepare for your taxes, right? At yeah. the end of the year, and you prepare, you get a baby shower ready, you know, you get all these things, and then same thing with death, but I think we neglect death. We do. But that's gonna happen, and I think, I think it's just so important that, you know, we honor every phase in life and i think that's what hospice was really made for by cicely saunders yes right? yes and you, I don't know if you, you can give a little rundown if you feel comfortable <laughs> like, but cicely saunders i mean so cicely's our mother right she, she started yeah. the hospice movement or yeah. the, or began the modern hospice movement but um yeah i i joke all the time which is a really bad hospice joke but i i joke that she'd roll over in her grave if she saw how people view hospice these days yeah. because it is so sad um that, that people, you know, don't want it until the very, very end when it's like, there's yeah. nothing left of this person. Yeah. Like, I'm taking care of a shell of a yeah. human being already. Um, and those are heartbreaking for us, too. Those are the challenging ones, honestly. Like, those are the days when we go home and we're like, man, did we give it our best? Because, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a challenge. But I, I, that is my mantra. It is the reason I went into hospice is that I truly, truly from the bottom of my heart and with every genuine bone in my body that believe that um, death deserves as much attention yeah. as birth. And yeah. having two children myself, it was a joyful experience. Yeah. Um, it was something to be celebrated. It was, you know, so many people prepared me for it, um, walked me through the process. My OB was there with me. Um, Obviously, you were there with me. You were my was, support yeah, system. I, I was there, right. <laughs> um, For, no, I'm just but I mean, like, death should be the same thing. Yeah. Um, I think that there should be people surrounding you and explaining that this could go 15,000 different ways. There's a yeah. million different scenarios, but a lot like being on a plane, going through turbulence. I don't, I don't know how to fly a plane. Like I want a skilled pilot to get me through that turbulence. I want mm. a skilled person to get me through the turbulence of watching my loved one die because yeah. it's, it could be smooth, but I will say less than 10% of our patients die without any intervention because yep. Yep. death is painful. Yeah. And I think having somebody there to walk with you through the turbulence of what will happen is is such a valuable asset yeah i think it's more i think it's more man i think from you know over the years of seeing families so many families i think it's more of keeping the family less anxious mm -hmm. and i think like having less anxiety just by knowledge yeah like knowledge is power that's that's one of the main reasons why we wanted to do this is yeah. to just spread the information right mm -hmm. But because that gives people like less anxiety, which then you can truly focus on your loved one at the end of life. Yeah, we want you to be like 
the true loved one, not yeah. the caregiver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our, our patients are, I, I compare birth to death all the time. Um, our patients get to a place where, you know, they, they need their diaper change. Yeah. They don't eat very yeah. much. They yeah. sleep all the time. All the time. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's a process of how do we get this patient to take a medication when they can't swallow pills anymore? You know, yeah. all those things. It's like, those are very similar to what a baby needs. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's a lot of work and it's navigating territory that nobody ever feels prepared for. Yeah. So it's tough. It's mm -hmm. tough. Any last kind of closing words regarding palliative care and hospice care? And if you're a family member and you're someone that's like, you know, trying to go that route or you get them, what would you recommend or what would you advise anybody? Just um, the first thing that you would tell someone. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Yeah. I think, um, you know, if <sighs> Google is a great search engine, um, but I, you know, bigger is not always better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes that does put families at ease to know I've got a staff of a hundred plus, you know, nurses yeah. who are gonna be there or whatever. But, um, you know, there's always 31 flavors, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there is, like you said, uh, one Chick-fil-A is not managed like another one. Yeah. One hospice is not managed like another one. Yeah. Um, I think if you if you can meet and know the hearts of the team that's going to be taken care of, ask questions. Ask who's going to be your nurse. Are you yeah. going to have six different nurses? Um, who's going to be your aide? Uh, who who's the social worker? Who's the chaplain? What kind of experience do they yeah. have? What do their other families say about you? You know, all those things are good questions to ask because I think that they they set each hospice apart. Right. Um, ask for somebody a rep to come out and yeah. do a hospice one hundred and one yeah. with you. Or Zoom nowadays. We got mm -hmm. Teams calls, Zoom calls. Yeah. you can do those. Yeah. With, these, with different hospices. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you can put a face to a name. Yeah. It's remember. I was going to say rememberable. That's not a real word. Rememberable is a good word. <laughs> it's like memorable that. and it helps you feel comfortable in your decision. I think we should coin that word. Rememberable. <laughs> rememberable. I like that. I don't know about that, but no, it's fine. <laughs> whatever. That's awesome. No, that's so, great. Yeah. That's Ask cool. questions. Ask and questions. Um, yeah, being a medical power of attorney is a really big responsibility. It is. We should do so, another yeah. one on that later. No, Maybe no. that'll be our next episode. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. If you guys liked this, please like and subscribe. And we'll do a whole bunch more of this to help families and uh, you guys make informed decisions with healthcare at home. We got to go. I'm hungry. What do, you, what do you want for dinner? What, you, what should we order something? <laughs> you do something. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys.